Can you hear me now? Yeah, OK. So I'm going to talk about quadrilateral mesh support in Firedrake. Uh, there are different perspectives on this. I'm going to start with the user's perspective. As uh, current and potential users, uh, what kind of features are supported by Firedrake? What does Firedrake offer to those who uh, want to solve PDs on quadri quadrilateral meshes? Which button? Oh, the town. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> Wrong. Can you just home? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to start with the user's perspective and the features. So first, an overview of the cell types. So both FireDrake and Phoenix support uh, intervals, uh, triangles, and tetrahedra. And uh, since the since FireDrake has extruded meshes, uh, with FireDrake one can also use semi-structures, quadrilaterals, and prism cells. And the work I'm going to present is that FireDrake also has uh, fully unstructured quadrilaterals now. And composing this with the extrusion, one can also use semi-structured uh, hexahedral meshes to solve PDs. So the features. The short summary is that you can do anything on, with triangles, what you can, anything with quads, what you can do with triangles. Uh, just to note a few features. So I already mentioned that this is composable with extrusion. And uh, a range of finite element function spaces are supported, including continuous, discontinuous, HDF, H curl, and also higher order ver versions of all these. And both cell integrals, exterior and interior facet uh, integrals are possible. And also one can use, uh, one can solve PDs on immersed uh, manifolds, such as a 2D quadrilateral mesh in a 3D space. Uh, so uh, Doug and Anders made this uh, periodic table on finite, uh, finite elements, uh, which uh, uh, contains a set of uh, useful finite element function spaces for mixed problems. As you can see in the first two blocks, uh, there are uh, simplices, and on the second two blocks are the hypercubes. And uh, so Phoenix has support for all the simplex function spaces in this uh, periodic table. And FireDrake has now support for this whole third block as well. And actually having uh, support for the fo fourth block only requires someone to do the legwork to implement these elements in fiat because the infrastructure is otherwise ready. Uh, OK, so what had to be done in FireDrake to have support for quadrilateral meshes? So there are three main ingredients. Uh, one of them is the non-affined support, which Andrew has just discussed in detail. Uh, then the finite element function spaces, which were already ready for extrusion. And uh, they were discussed last year by Andrew if I recall correctly, yes. And uh, there is the global numbering and orientation problem, which I will spend the, my, the rest of my talk on. OK, so global numbering and orientations. So first of all, uh, why do facet orientations matter? Uh, there are basically three areas where they are important. One of them is the node placement, when there are high order elements on the facets. Uh, the second problem is that direction of vectors in case of h div and h curve conforming elements. And the third problem is to match, uh, is for facet integrals, to match up the values from the two neighboring cells. So I'm just going to show two examples where uh, not having consistent facet orientations can cause two problems. So this one is the node placement when we have a higher order element. Uh, so FireDrake ensures continuity uh, between cells by uh, putting degrees of freedom on the shared entities, such as facets, or in case of quadrilaterals, the edges. Uh, so what you see internally that y we have this facet, and this has three nodes associated with it, a first, a second, and the third node. And if the orientation of the edge 
if there is a disagreement on the orientation of the edge, of a shared edge, uh, then the assumed uh, geometrical position of these nodes uh, will not match between the two cells. Uh, that's why we need uh, matching orientation between uh, cells. And there is a similar problem, uh, but now for uh, what, the, what do you value mean? So here we have an h curl uh, function space where a value in the node means a vector valued, uh, means a vector. And if we have the convention to uh, that the vector is po the positive direction is to point uh, is to point along the, the orientation of the edge, then again, if we have mismatch, uh, that will cause problems. So Phoenix and Firedrake assumes a consistent requires consistent facet orientations, and this would be quite a hard work to change. And so if you read a uh, Murray's paper uh, in which uh, the, the current solution in the Phoenix and Firedrake is described for simplices. Uh, then uh, you will see that, that, so this is an elegant, so this solution for simplices is, is an elegant algorithm, but unfortunately it does not generalize uh, for quadrilaterals. So the idea was for simplices that each vertex uh, has got a globally unique number and then the local numbering is uh, made to match up the global numbering. So basically the orientations are made in a way that uh, each edge is directed from the lower to the higher potential, let's say. And then because in simplices all pairs of vertices are edges and all three uh, vertices form a face you will basically always end up with a, a triangle which looks like, which, where the facets are oriented like this. So if you look at any of these, you can find the mapping from this to this one or to this one. So this is unfortunately not the case for quadrilaterals. If you try to do the same thing, you will end up with uh, different orientations. In fact, uh, Considering symmetries, there are four different orientations, uh, four different possible reference orientations. Uh, this first one uh, couldn't, uh, so this one we couldn't have get uh, from a potential field. And I can show counterexamples for the other three, uh, but this is the reference orientation uh, where it is possible to orient every quadrilateral mesh which is defined on an orientable uh, 2D manifold. So the most important thing you have to note that the opposite edges uh, point to the same direction uh, with this reference orientation. And uh, DL2 already has a serial algorithm uh, to, to orient quadrilateral meshes and we extended it uh, to uh, distributed memory uh, computers. So this is a GMS generated uh, unstructured quadrilateral mesh on a rectangular domain. And these are the edge orientations from Firedrake. And so if you select a cell and let's say assign these, or these directions to these two edges, and if you decided that these two edges will point to this way, then you can also, if you look at this cell, you can realize that now you have to make this edge be oriented like you see it, and similarly here. So if you set the direction of an edge somewhere, uh, then this will propagate along uh, such ribbons. And basically, uh, for all edges uh, in the quadrilateral mesh, you have these ribbons of edges in which all edges should be oriented the same way, but all ribbons can be oriented independently. So if you flip all edges in any of these ribbons, you will still have a consistent facet orientation. Oh, 
I don't like this PDF reader. Fine. So this is a graphical error, but uh, so here we see a, a counter example. Uh, here we see an example, the only case where this will not work. So if we have a if our ribbon is a closed loop along a Mobius strip, uh, then of course this orientation algorithm will fail. Uh, that's why there was that clause that only an orientable 2D manifold. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss FireDrake's parallel version. Uh, the basic idea is that, so here we have a distributed mesh, four processes, first domain, second domain, third and fourth. And uh, so since all global ribbons can be oriented independently, uh, we will just look at one single ribbon now. So first, we orient them locally, and then we may have disagreements along the shared edges between uh, the subdomains. So uh, this is what we will solve by flipping some of these uh, ribbons until they all agree on the, the orientation of the shared uh, edges. So we do this by first assigning uh, globally unique weights to each local ribbon segment, like these numbers here. And then exchanging along uh, the shared edges uh, the orientation and the weight. And basically the rule is uh, that every time uh, we adopt the higher one with the, the one with the higher weight. So if we look at the next one, uh, we will see that the eight from here propagated to its neighbors and also that this uh, re local segment was flipped while this stayed the same because this was already okay and this third here got the information from three and six and then it adopted six so now we still have conflicts so we will do one more uh, communication round and uh, then now we have oriented the whole of this uh, uh, closed uh, ribbon loop. So if we have a, a sensible uh, meshing of a domain and a reasonable mesh distribution then basically the number of required communication rounds will be uh, roughly the square root of the number of MPI nodes. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about uh, the union find problem or also known as the disjoint set data structure. Uh, this is a, so I'm just briefly presented, this is basic, you can find this uh, data structure algorithm basically in any data structures and algorithms textbooks. So the problem which this thing solves that you start with a bunch of singleton sets. And there are two operations, a union and a find. With the union, you can merge two sets. And then you can get uh, uh, sets with more elements. And with the find operations, you give the find operations two elements, and it will tell you whether they are in the same set or not. So the usual representation which is used to, to implement these two operations is that each element has a parent link. And uh, each set has a representative or root element whose parent link uh, points to itself. And all the other elements in that set uh, point to some other element, eventually uh, pointing up to the root element. So, uh, and the merge operation is uh, done basically by uh, looking up the root element in both sets and then reassigning one of those parents links. So there are different variations based on uh, uh, which uh, during merge, which uh, root elements parent should be assigned to the other or the other way around. Or uh, there are also optimizations like path compression. So if let's say I have D below A and this points to A and on directly to C, then once I do a find from D to C, I can reassign D to point directly to C. So the textbook version of this problem is uh, very fast in serial. 
it's almost uh, it it has almost linear runtime in the number of union and find operations. Okay, so why was I showing this uh, uh, data structure and algorithm? Because basically, so now let's forget about parallelism for a moment. I'm going to explain you how we ca how we can reduce uh, the quadrilateral edge orientation problem to an extended version of this one. So if you think of your edges in your mesh as uh, as an element, and you start with single tone sets, then basically if you visit each cell and just merge the sets of the elements for each pair of opposite edges. Then you will simply get all the ribbons as sets. So that way you can identify the ribbons. However, uh, this is not enough for us to identify the ribbons. We also need to assign orientations to the edges. Uh, that's why I, I had this idea to to extend this representation and add the sign to the parent link. So when we are orienting edges, an edge can have two orientations or directions. It can point either from one vertex to the other or the other way around. So we can represent it as pluses or minuses or straight or opposite orientation. And when we, let's say, uh, have a link from A to C, which is a, with a negative uh, sign, then that means that edge A has opposite orientation than edge C. So if we choose this representation, then basically our find operation, instead of just uh, retrieving the root, so when we look for the root or representative element for any element, then we will not just get that uh, F is in the same set as C, but we will also get that this is one minus plus minus if we compress that, that F have the same orientation as C. And also when we do the union, uh, we, know, we don't just, one doesn't just uh, cause the union with two sets they want to merge, but also with a sign. So that when I assign, let's say that B and C will be in the same set, whether should I use a positive or a negative link. And using this representation, uh, we can basically uh, adopt existing parallelization work for the disjoint set data structure or the union find problem uh, to create new, uh, new parallel algorithms to mesh, uh, to orient quadrilateral edges of quadrilateral meshes. So this paper gives an overview for distributed memory computers uh, of the parallelization of the union find problem. And actually the one used in FireDrake is equivalent to, to one of those compared. And uh, it's uh, among the best in uh, memory. It's not the best in running time. So if that ever becomes a problem, we will know where to look for alternative ideas. And thank you for your attention. Where, where is it in Petsy or where is something similar in Petsy? In, in Plex, the uh, edges of the DAG are decorated with uh, an orientation. And so you can. Oh, you mean, in, you mean the thing that uh, you have a, a traversal of the nodes in for everything, and then when you have a face. Yeah, yeah, I think I know that. <laughs> 